Hey, FedEds, I'm your host, John the Sur- Surgeon. You are tuned in to Sharing Our Pairings, episode 110, Coffee, Coffee, Coffee 2.0. We are broadcast live around the world and pick it up on the Armed Forces Radio Network. I apologize to all our Facebook listeners there. We had some uh, serious technical failures tonight. Um, what what happens, unfortunately, when you... Uh, when you start the service, uh, you know, a mere 20 minutes before the show is supposed to start. So I uh, apologize for the full start, but um, thanks to all our listeners who are stuck with us for this live session. Uh, Trippy, what's going on tonight, brother? And it's mixed with, I think, just some uh, some general bad luck, it mm-hmm. seems like. Um, but I'm doing good. I mean, now that we've hopefully got these technical issues worked out and we can actually record a show, I'm, I'm, I'm into it. Wouldn't that be nice? So, of course, uh, this is Coffee, Coffee, Coffee 2.0, and uh, the reason it's 2.0 is because we've already done a coffee pairing show in the past. Uh, We're revisiting that pairing show uh, with a tobacco special. Now, we've kind of already gone through this, so again, I apologize to all our Facebook listeners, but um, failure to launch, it happens. So, uh, you're smoking something special in the tobacco range. Uh, Yes. Talk our audience through that. I have got the tobacco special Red Eye. It is a four and a half by 54 uh kind of short robusto ish a um, little fatter than a short robusto but that's right and it's special because it is first it's a, exclusive to uh cigar federation and their sister sites uh but the more important reason is that it has three times the lajero um which they don't specify what kind of lajero it is but they do say that there are fillers from esteli so it may be Esteli Lajero, it may be some other kind of Lajero, but it is all Nicaraguan filler, uh, Nicaraguan binder with uh, the same Connecticut broadleaf wrapper as the regular Tobacco Special Negra. I suppose it doesn't matter as long as it's just uh, three times the amount, right? That's the key, three times. Yeah, exactly. It, and it really adds a, a pleasant kick to it. The regular series is kind of a medium minus, I would say. Uh, and this is kind of medium slightly into the medium plus territory it's not super strong but it's definitely got a little more pepper and a little more kick so i'm smoking the sort of i don't know if you call it the standard uh tobacco special negra but it's the normal release that's available everywhere uh i do like the special dolce which i think is a connecticut shade wrapper um and i think the connecticut shade goes really well with the coffee infusion process like that's a great combination but I think for me, sometimes I just need that broadleaf. So the, the difference is that the uh, Negra has the Connecticut broadleaf. Uh, I'm sure that the fillers are probably changed up a little bit, but same infusion process. And this is the Robusta, which is a 5x54 MSRP of 899 And, you know, we've, we've talked about it on previous shows that weren't even featuring the cigar about how this is kind of one of two cigars that we typically start with when we're on safari first thing in the morning with, with a cop of uh, cop with a cup of really strong Nicaraguan coffee. Yeah. And, and I just think it works really well as a morning cigar or mm. kind of an anytime cigar. But, uh, when you've been smoking T52s all day, it doesn't do the trick in the evening. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's, I mean, that's a valid point because, uh, I, I'd say that, you know, other than the Cuba Cuba, I think most of the acid series doesn't really fit my, my palate. Um, but what I like about the tobacco specials is that you, you get more of the tobacco influence. So you do get this, the sweet cap and you get that coffee infusion, but I find that it's balanced between the infusion process and the coffee where the infusion process isn't running that tobacco over. You're still getting the essence of the tobacco, if that makes sense. Yeah. And coffee is a flavor that you can sometimes taste in tobaccos. So, uh, it's not a huge stretch the infusion it's kind of adding to the existing flavors rather than than adding new flavors into the mix and we were mentioning on our uh, previous failure to launch uh section that uh the natural dirt is not it has uh the, sorry the, the regular natural has a vanilla sweet cap the dirt does not have a sweet cap but they don't infuse cigars they use uh, different types of non traditional cigar uh, well it's not not cigar tobacco it's uh it's other black tobaccos in the or i guess it's blonde tobacco pardon me blonde I, tobacco. I think so i think it's considered yeah. blonde tobacco they're pipe tobaccos pipe i know tobaccos. the uh the what is that one the it's like the lens the sort of lancero it's almost a lancero but it's oh yeah yeah the lonsdale uh nbd or ndb i think it's ndb ndb yeah uh, that one has a lot of kia in it which is a very interesting flavor for a cigar. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. Um, 
I think that's kind of where the idea for KFC came from. Like the fire cured tobacco is Latakia because Latakia has that really smoky peaty component mm-hmm. to it. And it makes for a really interesting cigar. And for me, you know, I'll smoke naturals and I'll smoke, like I said, tobacco specials either first thing in the morning or like you said, after you've smoked, I don't know, 10 T52s on Safari. Uh, it's kind of nice to have. It's a nice a sweet, change of pace. Yeah, it kind of yeah. recharges the palate, like brings the palate back a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's just a change of pace. You're not tasting those typical flavors that you always get in a cigar. You're getting something a little bit different, and that sweetness for me kind of resets my palate and gets me ready for something else. Now, uh, I'll ha- I hate to go have you go through this again, but um, I'm really kind of excited to hear your your coffee journey um, because you made some changes to your uh, to your oh, yeah. setup. Yeah, so I've been using the Chemex for about six months, I would say, and I start off with the brown paper filters that are square, so they kind of have weird points sticking out of the Chemex when you brew it, and then I switch to the white. Uh, bleached filters when I heard that some people said that the for some reason the unbleached filters have more of a papery taste yep. uh, which I never got too much um, but then for some reason the bleached filters don't have as much of that papery taste and I was satisfied with that then I uh, I started making cold brew a lot I make cold brew probably twice a week because I drink a lot of it and fits, fits it with making, your uh it's with your employment. Yeah, exactly. And it it's just such a pain to make because you have to filter out the grounds and then you end up with all of this, like, you know, that that silt. coffee paste. Silt, yeah. yeah. That's the word for it. The, silt. The, the, uh, yeah, particles. And yeah, just, just particulate matter that's in there and it's kind of a sludge at the bottom. And that is that doesn't make a good cup of cold brew. So I was running it through my Chemex, which the process took about an, usually about an hour for 64 ounces of coffee, and it was making me crazy. So I decided to just try a cheap steel filter, and the difference was unbelievable. Like, it poured straight through, no clogs, no having to change filters or anything like that. Just pour it straight through, done. Uh, so I decided to try that tonight, and then I also finally upgraded to a gooseneck kettle. It's not variable temperature, so it just boils and then turns off. Um, but, uh, it does make a much better cup of coffee than the regular electric kettle that I had been using. And I, you know, not to make the show all about coffee, but it is kind of all about coffee. It is all about coffee. Yeah, it is all about coffee. Uh, two things. One, I know that, uh, I've used a gold tone or gold filter before. And, uh, what I'm told, and I haven't done a taste test with my steel filter, my gold filter, but the idea is that the coffee reacts less with the gold filter than the steel filter. So it takes some of the acidity that you get from that reaction out. And I would absolutely agree with your sentiment that, first of all, if you're doing a pour over uh, reusable filter, it's kind of awesome. But I also find that with the, with the um, permanent filter, I actually get a lot more brightness out of the coffee. I don't know if that's just my head, but yeah. I've done. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely noticing that with this cup of coffee. It's like way, a lot of that bright lot fruitiness. Yeah. And you know, ultimately uh, it is a, it is a caffeine delivery system, but <laughs> I mean, if, if I could adjust to no caffeine, I would still drink coffee because it tastes great. And I, like I, you know, I've been drinking coffee, I think since I was like seven years old because I love the taste. I've always had a jacked up palate. I mean, I used to eat, jars of olives when I was a kid. So I've always had a weird palate, but for me, coffee is absolutely all about the taste. The caffeine delivery system is just an added benefit to make me not murder people first thing in the morning. Yeah. Coffee. I mean, it's a lot of work to make a good, a good cup of coffee. Uh And so on like on days that I just need that caffeine and I don't have time to deal with coffee, I'll have like a rock star or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But the reason I make coffee is because I love coffee. (laughs) Yeah. So hopefully, uh, I don't know if our Facebook audience is uh, is still tuned in and making comments, but uh, I think all of our technical issues are resolved with a restart, which is uh, the running joke in IT, you know, just restart everything and it fixes it, which is easier said than done when you're running a live show. But uh, hopefully yeah. all the issues are now resolved. So, uh, Trivia, maybe just give a quick intro in what your first pairing is of the night tonight, and then I'll kind of do a quick uh, intro on my first pairing. Sure. So I, I don't think we're live on Facebook, but... So sorry, you, you you stalled out there. Try that again. Oh, uh, our, our Facebook 
feed is not live awesome. for some reason. Okay. But we can repost the video and they can they can watch it later. So my first pairing of the night is Lane Coffee Nicaraguan El Dorado. Um, so this is from our buddy Logan, who also is in charge of uh, us right here at Cigar Federation. Uh, this is a coffee grown in the Matagalpa region of Nicaragua, and it's uh, kind of a full-flavored coffee bean that he roasts to a medium roast. And uh, as he describes it, it's got blackberry and butterscotch flavors, low acidity, medium body with a light milk chocolate finish. Um, so I'll take a couple sippies of this while you talk about your first pairing. That sounds delightful. And maybe Trippy, um, while I'm while I'm yammering on about my first pairing, uh, maybe for the Facebook uh, group out there, you could uh, just post the YouTube link in the comment section so they can find us I'm, on YouTube. I can do that. Thanks very much, brother. So uh, normally I would do coffee for a show like this, and I've done coffee, and I'm a huge coffee fanatic. I've been roasting coffee for like, I don't know, nine, maybe 10 years now. And I love, uh, I'm deep on the coffee. I have like six different coffee apparatuses. I have a new espresso machine on the way. Shh, don't tell the fiance. And I love coffee. I mean, when I'm in country, I drink coffee nonstop, but there's a side effect from that. And that's the caffeine uh, keeps me up. I'm a really, really light sleeper. So if I adjust my caffeine cycle, uh, unfortunately, you know, I'd be up. I pretty much wouldn't sleep tonight if I had coffee right now. So in keeping with the spirit of the show, which is a little bit tongue in cheek, I'm going with a Irish whiskey. And you might be thinking, well, what does that have to do with coffee, John? Well, if you tune into our coffee, coffee, coffee 1.0, you know that uh, one of the things that's integral to Irish whiskey making and some scotch making is a coffee still, also referred to as a continuous still, but it's named a coffee still for the gentleman that invented it, which his last name is Coffee. So that's that's the tie-in. Uh, quick hits about Kilbagan. Kilbagan Distillery is the oldest licensed distillery in Ireland. Uh, they, their production dates back to 1757, but the site itself dates back to a monastery founded in 1150. Now, unfortunately, uh, production ended in the 1950s, which that's a pretty good run. I mean, that's almost, what, 200 years, just under 200 years. And then they started up production again in 2007. And I believe it's declared as a heritage site now, which is kind of cool. Um, but I'll just kind of hold that up. It, I mean, it's pretty typical whiskey color. It's like that straw gold, you know, kind of hay color. And uh, quick hits about Irish whiskey. Again, if you if you haven't tuned into our back catalog, uh, Irish whiskey is made from a grain whiskey, which is typically made by wheat, and then a malted whiskey, which is made by malting barley, and they blend those together. So you, you make your... Uh, you make your grain whiskey in the continuous still, and then the malt whiskey is blended in their is blended together in the pot still. And their pot still is actually a copper pot still, and dates back 180 years. So there's a you know there's a lot of history there. Um, you know we talk about a lot of the Scotch distilleries, but a lot of the Scotch distilleries do not date back earlier than the you know mid to early 1800s. So Ireland Ireland was definitely you know kicking it hard on the uh, on the whiskey distillery. I'm gonna take some sips here. But I do want to take our first station break here. I want to remind our audience you are tuned in to Sharing Our Pairings. Episode 110, Coffee, Coffee, Coffee 2.0. I'm your host, John, the Cigar Surgeon. We are broadcast live around the world and picked up in the Armed Forces Radio Network. I am joined by Trippy Trent, my co-host. Stay tuned for a message from one of our sponsors. Sharing Our Pairings is brought to you by Gurkha Cigars. Gurkha Cigars, makers of the world's finest cigars. Try the 93-rated Heritage featuring a Rosado, Ecuadorian Habana wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, and Dominican, Pennsylvanian, and Nicaraguan fillers. Blended by Gurkha's blending team at American Caribbean Cigars, it is hand-rolled Nicaraguan and available in 35-count boxes. Talk to your local B&M about the Heritage today, or talk to them about other fine Gurkha cigars. Whatever your taste preference is, Gurkha has a cigar that's right for you. And we're back, so I'm taking. Uh, I'm gonna take some sippies of my uh, Irish whiskey here, and I'll let uh, first Trippy talk about how his first pairing of the night is going. So, I thought this would go really well with black coffee, and it sort of does, but in a different way than I expected. I expected there to be a lot of complementary flavors, but it's actually the sweetness of the uh, the sweetened tip on the cigar makes it almost like having a like a chocolate donut with coffee where you know you're kind of getting that you're not getting much sweetness from the coffee because i drink my coffee black but 
you get a lot more of those roasty fruity flavors from the coffee and uh it kind of covers up the i'm not sure if i'm getting far enough into the cigar where i'm not noticing the coffee flavoring as much but i'm certainly not noticing as much coffee flavor as i was at first um i think it's because the the actual coffee that i'm drinking that i'm pairing with is kind of covering up those flavors but i do get a lot of pepper and a lot of sweetness from the tobacco uh, which is really pleasant it they go together pretty well i mean unsurprisingly yeah like i said you know our, our kind of stock pairing in nicaragua is is a black nicaraguan coffee and, and i'd echo what you're saying that i think one of the nice things about having a cigar and again i'm not really a fan of the sweet tip but one of the ways it works really well is with a black coffee because that sweet tip does add sweetness to the flavors and it kind of plays a, around a little bit with your palate. It supercharges, it sets off your your sweet receptors. And I think that maybe gives you a chance to pick up more from the coffee. But from the sounds of it, it sounds like maybe the cigar is doing more for the coffee in this circumstance than the coffee's doing for the cigar. Yeah, I, I definitely think you're spot on there. Um, yeah, the, the sweetened tip I'm not usually a fan of, but it is kind of, uh, it does kind of help out the coffee. It's I'm not used to having, like I pair up pretty often with coffee. I smoke a cigar in the morning uh, and I'm not used to having that sweetness. It's kind of nice. Well, I'm talking about whiskey um i mean it's i say like whiskey the irish whiskey is blended to be very approachable it's not like mm-hmm. scotch whiskey and um that the flavors are overpowering it's not like the um you know you i don't i mean I, i'm trying to think of a really polite way to say it without slamming irish whiskey because i really like irish whiskey it's just not a full flavor like if you think about it in terms of tobacco where uh, you know, we talk about strength levels of tobacco and we talk about strength levels of this and strength levels of that. Well, the deal with Irish whiskey is it's meant to be very approachable. very delicious. Now, within that, there's some subtlety of some flavor. There's some sweetness. There's that uh, sort of uh, bright, fruity quality that's very, very light. And I think it's going well. I don't think it's, um, you know, it's not reinventing the wheel for me. Um, I don't think that either of these the spirit of the cigar is really doing anything like the, the spirit is not supercharging the cigar cigar is not really supercharging the spirit, but it's pleasant. I mean, it's an enjoyable experience. Um, you know, I think it, it, to me, it shows that you can pair a different kind of spirit with this cigar other than going straight coffee or a pop or anything like that. And I think it's still working for me. Uh, yeah, I finished my coffee, and I, I think it could be a better pairing. I feel like, actually, this cigar would go better with something like a, uh, maybe just an espresso with some sugar, right. like a Cuban coffee a Cuban style. Coffee, yeah. um, but I, I think the sweetness of the cigar kind of drowns out the other flavors of the cigar uh, when you're pairing it with just straight black coffee. Well, and it could, well, and it could, you know, it could very well be the Rydal coffee as well. Because, yeah. I mean, you know, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of different kinds of coffee. Like maybe something like an Ergachev would go really well where it's got that sort of cinnamony quality and, the, and a little bit of spice there. Um, you know, yeah. I think one of the, yeah. I could see that going really well. I, I think one of the dynamics of this particular cigar is that, you know, there's a multitude of different like chais and chai teas and, and different coffee. Oh, I can see a chai going really well with this thing. Yeah, like I think there's a lot of, you know, when people talk about, because we get asked very often for people who aren't uh, alcohol uh, alcohol imbibers, you know, what can you pair? And I think this is one of those cigars that might actually do a lot better with non-alcoholic pairings versus alcoholic pairings. Um, again, I think this Irish whiskey is tasty, but uh, it's not really breaking the bank for me in terms of flavor complexity on either the cigar or the whiskey. Yeah, understandable. So I think what I'll do here, because um, I'm running a little fast, is I'll get into my second pairing of the night. And I'm going in a, in a completely different direction, uh, still keeping within that coffee theme. Uh, and I was shocked I hadn't had this on the show before because I've had so much product from Stone Brewing. But this is the Stone Zocaveza. I've still never even had that. It sells out here so fast. I mean, it's something special. Now they say this is for the holidays, for the new year. I think this, um, this, this has been sitting in my cellar 
quote unquote, since like November of 2016. Um, and I'll talk about it in a sec. I'm going to hold it up for our live audience and uh, show them the color. I mean, it's stouty. It's got that nice, thick, thick, stouty element to it. It's got a great viscous head. Uh, I've warmed it up a little bit so I can get the maximum amount of flavors out of it. Stone Brewing, of course, we've had on the show a uh, multitude of times. I mean, I think it's, you know, along with Rogue, maybe the two uh, most featured spirits slash beers on our show that we've had in, in all of our 110 episodes. Uh, Stone Brewing was founded by Greg Koch and uh, Steve Wagner in San Diego in 1996. Uh, they're now the 10th largest craft brewer in uh, in the world, not even the United States, in the world. So that's, I mean, they're huge. And, you know, because uh, Coop did a primetime live a couple weeks ago talking about what is boutique. And I think what makes Stone Brewing Boutique, even though they are the 10th largest crop brewer in the world, uh, they specialize in locally grown small farm, ing- small farm ingredients. So even though they're this massive brewery, they're still trying to keep it boutique by by focusing on local ingredients. Uh, a little bit about the Zocaves, and, and once you hear what's in this trippy, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So they use Mostra coffee, and Mostra coffee is done in San Diego, fresh brewed, obviously. Uh, Pasilla peppers. I don't know. I'm not familiar with Pasilla peppers at all. Uh, of course, vanilla, cinnamon, nutmeg, and then milk sugars, which is, you know, so it's kind of a, um, really it's a, it's a milk coffee stout would be a better description. So this is only 8.1, I say only 8.1 uh, ABV. And then 50 IBUs, which is not uncommon for a stout. We sometimes see the AB, IBUs go 50, 75 up in that range. Uh, for hops, they're using English Challenger and East Kent Golding. And uh, one of the things I really love about Stone, and I'd really love to get someone from Stone on the show, beyond the fact they have like a million pairings on their page, the most important one, Trivia, you know what they have on their page? Cigars. Cigars. So they have a list of recommended cigar pairings. Now, I was not consulted on this, so I don't know if like there's any issue there, but I'll, I'll read them off. They're not really relevant to the, sh- the cigar we're pairing tonight, but they recommend Alec Bradley Prensado Robusto Corojo. Great cigar. cigar. Yeah. Casa Magna Colorado Extraordinario from uh, Casada. Great cigar. Uh, Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Robusto, which I had a chance to smoke last week when I was doing my week of events. The La Aroma de Cuba Mi Amor, which I get that one. That's got a lot of coffee presence for me. It's mm-hmm. got that like, cocoa and coffee. And then, and I feel like this is cheating with this last one. They say Padron 1964 Anniversary Series Maduro. Oh, I mean, easy. come on. Come <laughs> on. Like, that's... That's that's cheating. The 1964. I mean, if you can find something that doesn't pair with a 1964, that then your beverage is just nasty. That's yeah. You know, that's my opinion. Yeah, exactly. It it might not pair well with like a Coors Light or something, but I I can't think of anything that it really just wouldn't pair with at all. So nosing this, oh man. So definitely that Mexican hot chocolate influence. Um, you get that sort of cinnamon and um and spiciness right off the nose. And then that vanilla is just kind of underneath. It's, it's, I mean, it smells like dessert. It smells like some sort of fancy dessert. Mm. So malty, so tasty. So I'm going to let you talk about your second night here. All right. So uh, I mentioned it before we had our technical difficulties, but my uh, pairing theory for tonight was pairing after breakfast, pairing after lunch, pairing after dinner. So, of course, uh, Lane Coffee was my after breakfast pairing. For my after lunch pairing, I decided to go with an IPA. Wow! Um, you'll notice the other part of my uh, my theory here was coffee. So this is from Rogue, who I th- I think you had him on the show just last episode. Uh-huh. Um, so I won't get too much into them. They're local to me. They're uh, they started I think in Portland. I'm I'm not remembering now, but I I know they're now based in Newport, Oregon, which is out on the coast. Uh, they've got a giant brewery out there with a restaurant and a bar. It's kind of cool. You when you go in, you have to actually walk through the brewery to get to the uh, restaurant. So you're kind of smelling all of those. Oh, that's cool. All of the you're smelling the beer brewing. You're walking by these giant vats. You actually uh, the entrance is actually a old grain silo that I think it I think it said that it used to be their grain silo. Uh, and they just have a big doorway cut in it and you walk through and it's like a hundred feet tall. It's really cool. Um, 
but this is their cold brew IPA. So this is an IPA and they say that they add, I don't know what their batch size is exactly, but they add 200 gallons of Stumptown cold brew that seems to like every a lot. single batch. Um, yeah, that seems like a, a whole lot. I don't know oh. how, I mean, I've seen their brew kettles and I don't know how big they are, but they're very big. I would guess a couple thousand gallons. Um, but still, they're replacing a lot of that water with just straight up cold brew coffee. Uh, and they've, in the last few years, you may not see a lot of it where you are, but a lot of their local releases are using ingredients that they grow themselves. So everybody knows about their Pac-Man yeast, that's their proprietary yeast strain. So in this particular IPA, they have two row hops, and then from Rogue Farms, they have Dare and Risk. Or, I'm sorry, not hops, two row malt. Uh, and then they have Dare and Risk from their own farms. Uh, in addition, they have C40, white wheat, rolled oats, and kiln coffee malts, which are called coffee malts because of the color, not because they actually have any coffee. And then for hops, they use their own Liberty Rebel and Freedom hops uh, with some Simcoe in there uh, that they don't, of course, grow themselves. Everything they grow themselves is like proprietary stuff uh, that's their own strains. Uh, and then, of course, the 200 gallons of cold brew. That's so, a lot of cold brew. Yeah. It, it smells like cold brew. Hold, hold that up for... And you can see the, the color. It's, I mean... It's way darker than a normal IPA. Yeah, and it, it does have the kiln coffee malts in there, uh, which they use a lot in, uh, in like, stouts. But I, I assume there's not a lot of that in there because you're definitely getting some coffee color. Well, spoiler alert, this Zocoveza and this Tobacco Special might be the best Zocoveza and cigar pairing I've done, period. Wow. It actually makes me wish I had more Zocoveza. Um, I don't even know where to begin to describe this. The So uh, I was mentioning the first pairing, you know, really, really, the two, the, the cigar and the spirit, they weren't really doing anything for each other. They were, you know, they were kind of both distinct and neither one was overlapping. These two are fantastic. The spices in the Zilka Vesa are supercharging the tobacco in the Tobacco Special. And it's interesting, um, the, the sweetness, and I was listening actually to our uh, show with uh, Barry Stein from the Cigar Authority uh, just on my drive back from my long events. And uh, he had mentioned, you know, is there cases where it asked when, is there cases where two flavors of the same kind end up boosting each other? And this is an example of where that the milk sugars from the beer are supercharging that coffee sweetness in the cigar. It's really interesting. So I get a lot of co I get more coffee now off my cigar and then I go back to the stout and I get all these, you know, wonderful spices and, and wonderful sweetness off the, uh, off the, off the beer that I wasn't getting without taking a puff off the cigar. So it's a really interesting combination, but I'll get back to that in a second. We'll see what your, uh, what your, your uh, rogue, uh, cold brew IPA is doing for you right after this break. So I want to remind our audience, you are tuned in to sharing our pranks episode 110 coffee, coffee, coffee 2.0. I'm your host, John, the cigar surgeon uh, joined by trippy Trent. We are broadcast around the world and picked up on the armed forces radio network. Uh, of course you can tune in at cigarfederation.com, youtube.com and Facebook live after we upload the video. Sorry, technical difficulties. Apologize to all our Facebook live listeners. Not this week. Please stay tuned for a word from one of our sponsors. This show is sponsored by Cigar Oasis. Don't spend all your time worrying about your cigar wrappers cracking, splitting, or falling apart from humidity fluctuation issues. Set it and forget it by choosing Cigar Oasis, a professional solution which provides equal distribution of humidity with precise electronic controls. Monitor your cigars through the internet using the smart humidor Wi-Fi attachment. Why don't you spend all your time enjoying your cigars and relaxing and let Cigar Oasis protect your cigars. Cigar Oasis has solutions for any humidor. Make sure you set it and forget it today. Now, one of the things I um, want to comment on that uh, I really didn't touch on when we started the show is, why are we doing sharing our pairings on a Tuesday instead of a Wednesday? Well, first of all, uh, I just got back from doing a week of cigar events uh, across Alberta. And for those who aren't familiar with the, I was going to say topology, but it's the geography of Alberta. So think about Texas, the state of Texas. So as wide as Texas is, 
Alberta is taller. Alberta is like 92%, 94% the size of Texas, so a massive province. And essentially, I went from the sort of southern section of Alberta to not the furthest northern point of Alberta, but certainly far, far north, seven and a half hours north, and uh, hitting stores along the way. So I was basically doing cigar events for all of our stores throughout Alberta on the way and culminating in northern Alberta and then coming back on Sunday. So a little tired, uh, but why we're doing it on Tuesday is because uh, I signed myself up for a whiskey tasting. I know, poor me, on the Wednesday and completely forgot about it on my calendar. So, uh, you know, I wanted to give our audience a live show. And uh, so we're doing it on Tuesday. And that's that's my story. Uh, totally interesting, I'm sure. Trippy, how is that uh, second pairing of the night going for you? Uh, this is delicious. There, there are a couple things I forgot to say about it. It's 7.5% alcohol by volume. It's a lot for uh, IPA. Yeah, 82 IBUs. Woo. Um, and it's really interesting. So this is a style that I, I think we talked about it a couple weeks ago when I said, why don't you pick up a coffee IPA? And you said, what's that? Um, I think this is a style that's sort of unique uh, or at least just starting to get out there. there. There are probably, I don't know, five or six breweries that are doing it around here uh, where they're mixing coffee with IPA. And I find it's a really, really pleasant com- combination. Uh, you get you start off with that like fruity bitter hoppiness, or fruity hoppy bitterness rather, and then you taste coffee, and then the finish is just all hops and coffee, which sounds like a weird combination, but I think it really works, and it really brings out some creaminess in the cigar. Creamy, and, yeah, some it's creamy, it's spicy, uh, and I think this is just a good pairing. So I think what's funny is that. I'm positive I've seen that on the shelves. In fact, I'm pretty sure I saw that on the shelf when I went on my uh, most recent bottle hunt, uh, trying to queue up and uh, charge up for next week's event, next week's show. Uh, I'm positive I saw that on the shelf, and I don't know why I didn't pick it up. I, th- I think it's just because I'm not ready for IPA season, which, you know, yeah. whether I'm, I'm ready for IPA, IPA season or not, I was just looking on the local inventory lists, and it's IPA season. Like we are fully oh, yeah. into IPA season and goes the season. Like all the stuff that came into our the bottle shop is all IPAs, all goeses, with like the occasional ale and pilsner, but it's like mostly IPAs and goeses. Yeah, and and those are my two favorite styles: IPAs, goeses, and barrel aged stouts. The only problem is that goeses uh, are really, really tough pairing with a cigar. IPAs we mm-hmm. found. You know, there is some some styles that pair really well. Gozas, sourness and cigars, bro, just not a Yeah, they just don't go together. Uh, oh. I, I know of a couple. Like, the only one I can think of is the uh, the Viaje Leaded. It's got Ooh. a ton of citrus in addition to the spice that it's got from that extra Lajero, or the extra Medio Tempo, rather. And I think that the citrus in that cigar goes really well with the Goza. But that's the only one I can think of. Yeah, it's, I mean, we, I know we've, uh, we've had Goza shows in the past and they've not gone very well. I think we threw uh, Aaron Loomis from Developing Palettes into the uh, bus on that one. And you took it like a trooper. Uh, we should probably have Aaron Loomis from Developing Palettes back on for a normal show so he can uh, have some decent pairings. But I digress. Uh, I don't know how your pairing is going, but uh, I feel like the sweet spot for this cigar is any kind of coffee-infused or coffee-related beer because I'm ready to just stop and just continue to drink this beer and just smoke this cigar and, like, everything about this. I don't want to say it's perfect, but this is this is damn near perfect. Um, for me, the the IPA is just a little too hoppy for this cigar, I think. It's a good combination. The finish goes really well with the cigar, um, but the hoppy up front kind of blows out your palate a little bit because it's, I mean, this is a very hoppy beer. Now, you like, are you finding that um, because it's blowing your palate out, it's just running the cigar over? Like, you're not getting any of the nuances of the cigar? Or it's, just, it's just a funky pairing? It's just kind of a shock to the palate. So after I take a sip of the beer and I kind of get that hoppy and coffee kind of finish it goes really well with the cigar but you know i take a puff of the cigar and i enjoy that and then normally when your pairing goes really well you take a sip of the pairing beverage and you kind of 
you know, it brings out some of the flavors in the beverage. And this, the hops just kind of blow out my palate a little bit, uh, pretty briefly. But I guess blow out isn't the right word, but shock is right. definitely the right word. Well, like I said, I think uh, any kind of, uh, and I've got a couple coffee porters, and I think I might revisit the tobacco special with some coffee porters. But a coffee stout or any kind of spiced coffee stout, in in if this is any indication, this is a phenomenal pairing. This is absolutely where you want this cigar to be. If you're if you're looking to pair with an alcoholic beverage, this is 100% the way to go. And like I said, if we stopped right now, if we stopped the show, I'm 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 gonna finish this beer. I'm gonna finish this cigar, and I'm gonna be in my happy place. But that being said, we do have a third pairing of the night, and we should probably uh, we should probably get to that. Yeah, our work is not done yet. Our work is not done. So uh, this is my wild card because it's coffee, 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 not coffee, 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 coffee. If you're tracking the number of coffees there. So uh, I was at my local bottle shop, as I mentioned, and I, as a Scot, as a person with Scottish ancestry, I'm loath, loath to give up really good deals. And there was a great deal. And this is Ooh. one that should have a regular place in my in my bottle in my uh, humidor, humidor in my whiskey cabinet. And I haven't had this bottle on my shelf in a really long time. And this is the Glenfiddich 15. And uh, I know that there's a lot of people out there that have really, I think there's a, there's a lot of diverse opinions between the 15 and the 18. I find that there's a lot of people that prefer the 18 over the 15 and this equal, it's probably split right down the middle. I actually prefer the 18 over the 15, but I think for tonight's pairing, the 15 is probably a better match for this cigar. Glenfiddich, of course, I've featured on the show numerous times. They should probably uh, sponsor the show at this point. But uh, they are Speyside Distillery located near Dufftown, uh, one of the largest distilleries, maybe even the largest distillery in Scotland. And I've had the great fortune of taking a tour through the facility. Really cool tour. And, of course, you know, lots of um, lots of Glenfiddich poured for you for tasting. And they've kind of got that cool display cabinet where they show you you know, 50, 75 years of spirit on the shelf. Like they've got little bottles of all the different spirits throughout the year, which I think is awesome. And Glenfiddich Fate Founds uh, dates back. It's founded in 1880, 1886. They use the Robbie Dew as their water source. Um, they produce over 10 million liters of spirit a year, which is uh, just under 3 million freedom gallons, which is a lot. That's a lot of spirit. Now, when we're doing our, um, our show with uh, Johnny Walker, of course, you mentioned that the blended whiskey world, uh, Johnny Walker does close to 100 million liters of spirit a year. So, yeah. you know, putting it into context, Glenfiddich is huge within the single malt industry, but as a world consumption, blended malts are really the, you know, that's the world leading consumption product, especially in the States. Um, so what's, what makes the 15 a little bit different than the 18 is that it's finished in Solera cask, and they actually say on the thing, on the bottle Solera cask, and I'll kind of briefly explain what that is. First of all, it's a 40% ABV. Sad, sad panda. Yeah. I can, you know, I kind of wish it was 43 or 46, but it is what it is. Uh, they age it in European oak sherry casks and new oak casks. So for those who aren't familiar with the process of, of single malt, um, cause we've had single cask bottlings on the show before. They, they do vat together multiple casks. So you've basically got a spirit that's been aged in European oak sherry cask, and then you've got spirit aged in, in uh, new oak cask. They combine that together, and then they finish it in Solera, in a Solera vat. And Solera vat is another type of sherry cask. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of sherry going on here. Now, if I hold this up, you know, this is a classic example of you really can't tell a whiskey by its color because if you look at this, you know, this is almost, I'm going to hold up the uh, tail bag in here for what's what's left. And you can see, looking at those, they're they're not that far apart. You know, you wouldn't really think that that was finished in, in a lot of sherry there because it's quite light. It's a golden, you know, it's it's really only two shades off of that uh, kill bag. And so the, uh, the color of it really doesn't tell you what the spirit is going to be. I'm going to take some noses and take some sips and um, maybe let you talk about your last spirit here tonight. Your last sure. Beverage. Before I get into it, two notes about what you were saying. First, uh, the the vatting process. It's important to note that in that bottle, it's not all 15-year-old spirit. Correct. It could be anywhere up to, you know, 50 years. Uh, it's just 15 is the minimum. So everything in that bottle is at least 15 years old. That's right. The other thing, 
And that's, and that's, and that's a consumer. Sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, and that's, that, that, that's a consumer protection mechanism because they don't want people advertising that it's a 22 year old spirit when there's only two drops of 22 year old spirit in there. So, you know, whether it's comprised of 97% 17 year old and 3% 15 year old, the youngest whiskey is what needs to be in the bottle. And that's the way they keep the distilleries honest. Yeah. And, and that's actually, interestingly, this is completely on a tangent, but interestingly, have you heard of, uh, the compass box. I don't remember what they call the release. Uh-huh. I have. But it's it's like a twenty four and a twenty six with point zero zero two percent three year. Yeah, they got Gosh. a lot of they got a lot of um a lot of flack for that from the yeah. uh, whatever the whatever the organization is in in Scotland that determines. Yeah, they got a lot of grief for that, and their their argument was: look, we're just telling everybody accurately what's in this bottle, um, but they you know. That's that's not what the law states. That's not what the yeah. rules so, are. So now they're, of course, not allowed to say that. Um, but I, I actually recently found out on their website, they will tell you exactly what's in every single one of their blends. You just have to click a button and tell them your email address, and then they email you exactly the percentages of exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other thing is about the color. You can't tell anything from the color of scotch. Sadly, uh, no. I think the prime example of that is Ardbeg which is it almost like Ardbeg 10 looks almost like vodka. It's almost completely clear, um, but it's got a ton of flavor packed in. So anyway, back to my pairing. So my final, my after dinner pairing is Modern Times Black House Stout. Uh, so Modern Times is based in San Diego, California. We've talked about them a few times before. Black House is interesting because they are, as far as I know, they're the only brewery that roasts their own coffee. So this is 75% Ethiopian and 25% Sumatran coffee Ooh. that they, they roast in-house before mixing it in with the beer. Um, and it's weird. They don't tell you what the, uh, well, at least on the can. So on the website, you can actually get the recipe for all of their beers. But on the can, they tell you what coffee they use. They tell you every single malt they use. They don't even say a single word about the hops. Wow. Uh, so to, to tell you what malts are here, we have two-row kiln coffee, which we talked about a few minutes ago, flaked barley, pale chocolate, Munich, Crystal 60, roasted barley, midnight wheat, and oats. And this is a, a stout-looking stout. But surprisingly, it's only uh, 5.8% alcohol by volume, wow. which is pretty low for a stout. Um, but the nose is just all, you know, roasty coffee. Roasty toasty. Roasty malts and coffee. Uh, and it's it's kind of right in the, uh, the middle ground of a stout at 40 IBUs. So it's not super bitter, but it's got some bitterness to back it up. So I'm going to take a couple sips while you talk about your Glenfiddich. Please do. And before I talk about my Glenfiddich, I uh, do want to take another station break. And I want to remind our audience you are tuning into Sharing Our Pangs, episode 110. Thanks to all our live listeners on YouTube at CigarFederation.com. This is Coffee, Coffee, Coffee 2.0. And I am your host, John the Cigar Surgeon, joined by Trippy Trent, my co host. As always, we are broadcast live around the world and picked up in the Armed Forces Radio Network. Please stay tuned for a word from one of our sponsors. The show brought to you by Drew Estate. Until June 30th, if you're a Drew Diplomat member, you attend a rewards program event and make a promotional purchase, you will receive a Liga Privada Velvet Rat. You'll also be entered to win a Drew Diplomat Pewter Ashtray, Mega Standing Ashtray, or the Swag Closet Human, or dubbed the Divorcinator. All these products were built and designed by Drew Estate Subculture Studios. If you're not a member, download the Drew Diplomat app from the Apple Store or Google Play Store today. And we are back talking about stouts, talking about whiskey. I am pairing the Glenfiddich 15 Solera. And I, I mean, I, yeah, I really like this spirit. This is a really good spirit. And I know why people like this. But what I think is surprising for me is the amount of sort of sherry influence in this that doesn't come across as sherry. And I think it's just the style of sherry on this whiskey that, it, that I'm not, how, how can I put this? I'm a fan but I prefer Pedro Jimenez. I like the spices. I like the mm-hmm. stewed fruit. I like the dark raisins and plums and, you know, that kind of sherry influence. And this is not what the 15 is, which is probably why it's more approachable for a lot of people. 
This is more of the bright fruits, like the raspberries and the strawberries and the, and the peaches and the pears uh, without any of that spice. So it's in a, it's, it's in a very different direction than the kill bag. And it's a very different direction than the uh, Zocaveza, but it's good. I mean, it's got that, you know, it's got that like citrus component to it without this, the bitterness and without the sourness, it's just got that sweet citrus. It's pretty good. I mean, it's tasty. It's a good pairing. I don't think it's rocking my rocking my socks, but it's a good pairing. How uh, how's that modern times? It's good. Uh, I think my experience with this stout is the same experience you had with with the stout you're drinking tonight. Uh, it, I mean, it's just all coffee with a little bit of hops on like on the finish, but it's really just sweet roasty coffee. Mm. Uh, and it goes really well with the cigar. The The only thing that I can say negative about it is that I think it makes the sweetness of the sweetened tip of the cigar taste a little bit more like artificial sweetener. Mm. Um, where drinking it with just plain coffee really made it kind of like a donutty kind of sugar-coated sweetness. Um, but I think that's just because this... This is a, a pretty sweet stout, but it, it works really well with all that coffee. So I was mentioning that I wasn't getting a lot of spices off the um, Lymphitic 15. But now that it's had an opportunity to settle in, I'm getting quite a bit of uh, lingering spice. Again, not what I would get off like a Pedro Jimenez where you get that intense, you know, intense, intense pepper spice, baking spice. Um, it's more of a subtle nuance spice. Kind of like... Um, you know, if you had too much cinnamon and it's good. I mean, I think the sweetness of this does a, again, uh, in this case with this pairing, I think the sweetness off this Glenfiddich 15 serves to, uh, highlight the tobacco in the tobacco special. So I think a lot of those coffee notes are being lost when I pair it with the spirit. I think a lot of the, um, sweetness from the cigar is being lost. So, you know, if you're looking to pick up a lot more of the tobacco elements of this cigar, this is probably a good pairing for you. That's not really why I smoke a tobacco special. The reason I smoke a tobacco special is because it has that coffee infusion. So I think this last pairing might be um, might be a little bit of a miss for me. Oh, uh, but see, my my last pairing is is perfect. I think. Well, at least like you said, it's close to perfect. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say that a pairing is perfect. The other negative note that I have for it is that the the immense coffee notes in the in the stout kind of cover up the coffee notes in the cigar a little bit, but it, it highlights the tobacco so well that I'm okay with it. Fair enough. I get a lot more complexity from the tobacco. So I know, so I know you've only had a brief moment to introduce yourself to the modern times, but looking back over the pairings of the night, this Kilbaggin, um, easy pairing. Uh, you know, if you, if you're a fan of Irish whiskey, I think Irish whiskey and the tobacco special, they pair, they pair fine. But you're not going to find that the uh, Irish whiskey is going to do a lot to highlight the components within the cigar. And you're going to find that the, com- the cigar is not going to highlight a lot of components in the Irish whiskey. They're, they're kind of on two separate train tracks. They don't really intersect at all, uh, which is a little disappointing. I was kind of expecting more interplay there. So for me, I would kind of rate that, that first pairing as an 81, 82. Uh, I would pair it again, but uh, I'm not going to seek it out. And with my first pairing, the, uh, the Lane Coffee... I, I mean, I just think it goes really well. It's kind of, you get kind of a breakfast feeling, uh, which is exactly the reason that we have almost the exact same pairing in Nicaragua is this cigar is just made to go with coffee. It'd be nice. It'd be a little better to have a sweetened coffee, uh, just cause I think the flavors would play a little better, but it, it just goes really well with black coffee anyway. Looking back over my second pairing of the night, the uh, Stone Brewing Zogaveza, as Trippy was just saying, near to a perfect pairing, I think, as you can get. Um, if you're going to pair it with coffee, if, you know, go with an iced coffee or uh, something with, with a little bit of sugar or cream in it, because I think that's probably the way to go. If you're going to go with a beer, uh, go with a, a coffee porter or a coffee stout. I think that is an absolute no-brainer pairing. Um, this is not only the highlight of the week, but probably the highlight of the last few shows for me. I think this one's going to probably pull wow. out one of my highest ratings. I'm going to go with like a 96, 97. Like this is a, this is a near perfect, perfect rating for me. Wow. I got to hunt down a bottle of that. And mm-hmm. I believe 
they have a barrel aged version of that one. Oh, son, that'd be, that'd be that'd be off the hook, winter. off the hook. Um, so I'm gonna have to hunt down both of those mm-hmm. uh, this coming winter to pair with one of these red eyes. My Absolutely. second pairing. So I forgot to give a score on my first pairing. I would give that one a ninety. Not it's quite good. perfect, but it's very good. Um, the second one I'm going to go with like an 86. The beer on its own is fantastic. The combination of hops and coffee goes together so well. The problem is it kind of fights with the cigar a little bit. And and that palate shock you get from the initial kind of blast of hops just does not work with the cigar. Um, so again, this one's like an, an 86. Which makes sense. I think we found that uh, anything with a lot of over hops, tough to find a cigar that pairs well. Um, Fire cured seems to be the uh, the no brainer. Yeah. Uh, last pairing of the night, Glenfiddich 15. Um, this is a little bit better than the Kilbaggin. Um, I think just because the Glenfiddich has a little bit more character, but it's not really the the ballpark. I think for this cigar, um, decent enough pairing, but I, I don't think um, I don't think it's right. I think the mismatch here is a little bit too much. Uh, I would probably rate this at an 84-85, so it's kind of an average everyday pairing, and for me, not really a standout. And for me, the uh, Modern Times Black House, uh, this is the pairing of the night. I would give this one 90, 92, 93. Uh, it's just the flavors go so well with the cigar, and it brings out a little bit more of the tobacco notes in the cigar. The cigar brings out some of the coffee notes and the sweet notes in the beer. Uh, just a great pairing. So looking forward to the rest of the week, uh, looking at Cigar Chat, because we are we are broadcasting a live Cigar Chat tomorrow night, and I think... Uh, when? Is, is tomorrow- Thursday night. Thursday night, Tonight's right. Tuesday. See, this, this, yeah, this is what happens when... Yeah, it's uh, throwing we, you off. We, we throw me off. So Thursday night, a regular nightly time of Cigar Chat at 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, 6 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Pacific. We have one of the smartest guys. I think I don't even think there's an argument there. One of the smartest guys in the industry. I don't think it's even one of the smartest guys. I think it's just the smartest, smartest guy. guy. Yeah. I mean, literally, do you literally. Know anybody else in the industry who's worked for NASA? Worked for NASA. Not only did he work for NASA, but he loves cigars so much and delivering cigars to our audience that he gave up his cushy job at NASA to make cigars full time, and that is Omar De Frias, the gentle giant. We're going to have him on Thursday night on Cigar Chat. I'm really looking forward to that because it's been a while since we've had Omar on Cigar Chat. Yeah, I'm excited to have him on. And then next week on Sharing Our Pairings as we lead up to the IPCPR, which is really just a couple of sleeps away, a couple of weeks away here. We're, we're really coming up on a quick. We're going to have our good friend Barry Stein from the Cigar Authority back. Uh, you know, we, we had a blast with him. It, it just seemed like the show had a great flow to it. Um, and Barry is a huge lover of everything rum. And, uh, I think, you know, for you and me, Trippy, getting us to pair with rum is, is kind of like twisting our arms. Except oh, yeah, our arms are tough. rubber. Yeah. It's so tough. So, uh, we're going to have a rum pairing feature for next, uh, Wednesday live regular time of 8 PM Eastern on sharing our pairings. And then uh, I don't even know, do we have a guest booked for next Thursday? I don't even think we do. Um, we almost do. I, I don't want to say who it is because it's not a hundred percent, um, but uh, I think people will enjoy it. Stay tuned to that announcement. You can check out the event calendar at CigarFederation.com. And then the week following, so the, the last week before the IPCPR. Oh, my God. It's so close. It's so close. So uh, two weeks from now, and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a, you know, I'm a little nervous, but I'm a little excited. We're going to have an old-time favorite from sharing our pairings back. Robbie oh, yeah. Rass returns from Mombacho. We're going to do some Mombacho pairings. I gotta find a way to fit a Pilsner in there, just as an homage to uh, Claudio Segroy of the Master Blender and President of uh, Mombacho. But uh, Robbie's gonna be back. Uh, that is sure to entertain. Uh, we're almost certainly gonna have an After Dark segment because uh, that's just how we roll. Um, and then uh, the following Thursday, we're gonna have a pre-amble to the IPCPR. So it's just gonna be us and hopefully Logan, because he will be at the IPCPR. To what extent, we're not quite sure. Yeah, Dad, we'll, daddy money back, daddy, daddy money bucks. Yeah, we'll we'll be running around, uh, getting some coverage. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly what Logan's going to be doing. We'll see. But we are going to do our pre-IPCBR coverage on Thursday. That's in two weeks' time. We're gonna have a show, kind of talking about what we're looking forward to at the IPCPR. 
And uh, maybe what we're expecting from this IPCPR, you know, there's a lot of discussion about whether this is going to kind of be the last big show. Uh, we are certainly going big at this IPCPR and we'll, IPCPR, and we'll talk a little bit about that on that show. Always a fan favorite when we don't have a guest and we just kind of ramble on for an hour and smoke whatever. So you'll you'll want to for sure tune into that. Um, again, that'll be two weeks time on our regular Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And that's, um, I mean, that's basically it. That's what our show lineup is. And then we're going right into IPCPR coverage. So, of course, if you aren't subscribed to our podcast already, I can't imagine why you aren't, but you'll want to make sure to subscribe to there or our YouTube channel because we're going to be trying to deliver uh, not live content, but near live content of video coverage from the IPCPR updated daily. We're going to have some great video coverage. We're going to be running around like crazy people. I'm going to be doing my best to be sauced the entire time. <laughs> So uh, that's that's really my goal for the IPCPR is just try to be sauced for eight hours on the show floor. So you'll make sure to want to tune into that. Um, I don't know. It's a good show. Uh, I, you know, I'm reminded of how much I like the tobacco special when we do these pairings. Yeah, it's it's easy to for me to think. I, I'm not a big fan of anything infused, uh, but this is just a solid cigar, whether it's Absolutely. infused or not. So uh, thanks to all our live listeners who tuned in at CigarFederation.com, YouTube.com. Again, for our apologies for our uh, technical issues on Facebook, we'll make sure to start our services an hour before so all these wibbly-wobbly applications can do their updates before the show starts. Uh, again, we will be live on Thursday at a regular scheduled time for Cigar Chat. But as we always say in Sharing Our Parents, we want you to bring, drink better, but we do want you to drink less.